Hello everyone, welcome to this video. So in the last couple of lessons we've been examining what happens to an equation when you add or subtract a number over here. So for example y equals to cos x minus 3 is a normal cos graph moved 3 units down. y equals to sin x plus 2 is a normal sin graph that is moved 2 units up. So we were moving the graph upwards and downwards and we call that a shift. Okay, so we saw things like a normal sin graph being completely moved upwards like that. What we're going to look at in this video is something totally different. Instead of shifting the graph, we're now going to stretch the graph. Okay, so what I mean by that is the following. A normal sin graph does that and it goes up to 1 and down to minus 1. If I stretch the graph then I could do this. So notice I took this piece and I pulled it upwards but then I took this piece and I pulled it downwards. You see so I didn't move everything up I moved some of it up and some of it down so I caused the graph to go from this type of shape to that type of shape. You see so I made it higher and lower whereas in the previous video or in the previous lessons, we typically took a graph like a sin graph, and then what we did is we took each point and we moved it up. Everything went up, or we could have also moved everything down. And so the resulting graph typically did something like that. Whereas in this video, some parts are going to go up like that, and then other parts are going to go down, so that we end up with a stretch. Okay, so I hope you understand the difference there. So they tell us that this is a sin graph. It has not been moved upwards or downwards like in the previous lessons because there's no number at the end of here, okay? The, the important number we're looking at this time is in the front. Now that number tells us that it's been stretched. So a normal sin graph would look like this. See there, in white it would go up to 1 and down to minus 1. So the original, and then I'm going to say new, so the lowest and then I'm also going to say highest. So on the original graph the lowest is minus 1 and the highest is 1. On the new graph the lowest is minus 2 and the highest is 2. So how do you get from there to there? Or you could say that you should plus 1 but then if you plus 1 to this one it doesn't get you to the same place. How else could you get from 1 to 2? You can multiply by 2. Now if you take minus 1 and you multiply that by 2 it does give you minus 2. So that is what they've done. They've multiplied the whole graph by 2. So we can put a 2 in the front over there. Did you know that that number is also going to be the amplitude? Because with amplitude we need to find the resting position which is over there. And if we look at that distance it's going from 0 down here up to 2. And so the amplitude of this graph is 2. Whereas in the previous lessons the amplitude was always 1. And that's because of the number in the front I kept using a 1 over there. Or I didn't write anything. I would typically say something like y is equal to sin x. So the number in the front is a 1. And so the amplitude was always 1. And so as always, let's go through the domain range period and amplitude. So the domain is your x values, which in this case is just going from minus 360 up to 360. The range is the y values. So we say y is an element going from minus 2 up to positive 2. We can see the lowest value is 2 and the highest value is 2. The period of a sin graph for grade 10 is always 360, no matter what the number in the front or if we maybe add a number at the end. Then the amplitude is always this number in the front, but you could also say from the resting position, and we can clearly see that that length is 2. 